Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Priya Sirkar, Director of Arts at Knight Foundation. Uh, please let me know if you can't hear me and I'll adjust. Uh, my colleague Adam Ganuza and I will be uh, going through uh, some information about the Knight New Work uh, open call today. And we wanna thank you so much for taking time today uh, out of your busy schedules to learn more about this funding opportunity. Uh, we are really excited to share this information and we will be doing Q&A toward the end of this hour. So please feel free to drop in any questions you have using the Q&A function in Zoom. And we will try to get through uh, as many of those as possible once we go through the, um, the overview of the information. And you may find that we, we, some of your questions might be answered as we go through this. So Night New Work, uh, you, you may be familiar with it from when the program was um, premiered in 2018 uh, as a way to support the creation of new work in the performing arts, uh, particularly in dance, music, and theater. And we're uh, excited to offer it again this year, but in a way that we have rethought it um, to, to really match what we're seeing you all doing um, in the performing arts. Um, you know, as we, as we all know, the arts have been really hard hit during the pandemic. Uh, and that um, so many things about how we experience the performing arts, how we make uh, performing art um, is, is changing and, and has changed. Uh, but we have been so inspired to see how so many of you artists and organizations are rethinking how you do that work and, um, and you still found ways to um, create new art, to um, engage with your audiences and share what you're creating. Uh, and that's been so inspiring to the Knight Foundation. And so we, we thought, well, it, it, if you all are adapting and being innovative, let us rethink what Knight New Work is for 2020 and how can we support um, the great work that you're all doing. So that's what uh, Night New Work 2020 is all about and, um, and we'll uh, spend the next little while um, telling you more about, about this opportunity. So Adam, if you could go, go on ahead and, and take over, Adam is gonna walk through um, kind of the nuts and bolts of how the program is designed and uh, also give us a look at the application, which is now open and we're accepting applications through September 7th. Uh, and so hopefully that'll, um, that'll be helpful as we give you some, some tips on kind of how to think about um, applying for this opportunity. Fabulous, well, thank you. Thank you so much Priya for that um, lovely introduction. And I'm really excited to be able to talk about a night, night new work, this opportunity that is an open call to commission uh, and ultimately premiere new works of dance, music, and, and theater, or some combination uh, thereof. Now, this is, broadly speaking, a two-phased um, program. And so the bulk of the time that we're going to be spending today, we're going to be talking about the first phase of this program. That's the, that's the phase that we are currently receiving applications for, which you can apply at the link that it just popped up into the chat uh, between now and September 7th. Winners, people will, uh, will submit uh, an, an application, which is a fairly simple application, and it, and it in effect is a pitch for a concept uh, for for a new work, um, what we're what folks are going to be competing for is a ten thousand dollar prize to further develop that work concept that gets presented in the in, in the application, and we'll talk a little bit about what that means. But first, a bit about eligibility. So pretty, it is op individuals, collectives, and uh, artist collectives and organizations are eligible to apply. 
You do not have to be a 501c3. Uh, if you're applying as a nonprofit organization, you do not need to have a 501c3 status. And an artist collective, when we say art, artist collective, we are referring to an informal organization that comes together for a specific project or for a specific body of work and doesn't have a formal, does not formally organized. So that could be, let's say, me and my friend who work together on this particular project, we can be, we, we consider ourselves an artist collective for this particular, or maybe it's a group of friends, we'll consider ourselves an artist collective for this particular work of art. You must be based, currently based in Miami-Dade County. Okay, if you're if you're an, and if you're an organi organization, you will have to demonstrate uh, that you've operated uh, in Miami-Dade County for a substantial amount of time. Okay. Now, this proposed work should be of dance, or should be in dance, uh, in music, or in theater, or some combination of those things. The proposed work must be new. And by new, we mean that it has not been premiered yet. Okay, so it doesn't have to be new in the fact that you just can't, you've just come up with the, just conceived of the concept. What we consider new is that it has not been premiered. And most importantly, this idea has to be feasible in the context of physical distancing and other health and safety protocols. This is this what we're looking to support through this program are art, arts ideas or concepts for new works that can help inform what a post-pandemic future for the performing arts is. Hence the necessity that it be able to be to be feasible within the constraints that we're seeing on the ground now. Again, we're gonna we're gonna save Please, you can, if you have questions, you can drop into the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We're going to save time at the end of our presentation to be able to answer the questions. We're going to go until three o'clock today. Um, we'll go until three or until we answer all the questions, whichever comes first. Okay. Now, the, the application itself has a few simple parts to it. Okay. It is through submittable.com, which is if you are familiar with our uh, night's application process, um, particularly with the Night Arts Challenge, then you'll be familiar with Submittable. It's a third party web platform that allows you to submit an application and you have to establish a username and a password and then you'll be able to submit your application. But you can save, you can save drafts uh, on, on there. And I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna show us that in just a second. The application is fairly simple, right? It has an artist statement. It has uh, asked for people to describe the concept for your new work. Um, then you have to have a sort of feasibility statement. So how is it that this would actually work in the context of coronavirus? We'll have ask you to present some work samples and uh, any, uh, um, supplemental materials that um, help may better illustrate your your work or what your uh, what you expect the kind of your 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 plan for the conceptual for this new work concept and that could be things like uh, you know me media coverage of previous events it could be it could it could be um, a selfie style kind of video introducing yourself, just being able to talk about yourself in the same ways. Um, we'll, we'll we'll see a couple examples of what that can be uh, when we go through the application, which I'm going to bring up right now. Once you log in, you're going to see that it's going to it's go going you're going to you're going to see um, this is going to be the page where you'll land on here and you can click apply now great and it'll open up the application these this is a little bit of kind of background information you you have a link to the frequently asked questions um, about um, some more information about your work then you you submit your address yada 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 whatever it could be this is your physical address let's see you live on one two three Easy Street in Miami. 
uh, and then we'll just, we're kind of filling it out with fake information here. Uh, and we'll get to the, and we'll get to the application itself. It's very, it's very, it's very straightforward. You create a title for your project. You can select which type of, uh, which type of entity you'll be applying as an individual artist, an artist collective or presenting or commissioning organization. The questions are all the same, regardless of which type of entity you are applying as the only, the only difference is for instance, if you're applying as an organization, it will say, you know, it'll ask for your organizational name, not your, not your individual name. Okay. All right. As we come down, ask if you're based in Miami-Dade County, et cetera, et cetera. These are all drop downs. You put in your website. This can, I'm going to do this from the perspective of an individual artist as much. You'll put in your artist statement. It's 500 words. This is uh, sort of the five long version, form version of the concept for your new work, 500 words. And then you could do like a tweet. We asked that you do like a, a, a short description. This is kind of like a tweet length, like one or two sentence description of what it is. And then this, this big feasibility statement here where you have to describe, you know, the plan for the eventual production and premiere of the new work and talk about how it accounts, how that plan accounts for the health and safety, health and safety protocols. You, could, you upload your work samples here. As you can tell, there's all sorts of different files that are acceptable, um, file types that are acceptable, as well as your supplemental materials. There's quite a wide range of file types that are acceptable. And listed over here are some examples of what these supplemental materials can be. The rest is just kind of contact information questions. Okay. Very straightforward. At the end, you will have to certify that this is your original work. You have to agree to receive communications from the Knight Foundation regarding this application and other related news, AKA that you end up on our mailing list and that you're at least 18 years, uh, 18 years old and our terms and uh, agree with our terms of use. Once you're done, apply now, you're all done. You could also save your save, save a draft if you need to come back at a later time. Okay, super, super straightforward. Now let me get back to this um, presentation. Uh, presentation. Okie dokie, no, this one, there we go. Now, the applications themselves will be reviewed by an advisory panel of national practitioners. These are people who, who are uh, national leaders in the performing arts as well as in uh, technology, um, uh, especially as it, re as it relates to the use of technology with respect to the performing arts. And um, we'll be doing, you know, they, they'll read and score applications and then we'll do a round of interviews with finalists. The winners will be announced, winners of this first phase will be announced publicly in 20, uh, in December of this year. Okay. Now, winners can choose to be connected to each other and to the advisory panel um, for his collaboration, inspiration, and motivation. Listen, this is a, these are, these are, these are, um, these are big questions um, that folks are dealing with. It's kind of uncharted territory. And so uh, we felt that the opportunity to be able to collaborate with, um, to collaborate with uh, our peers, as well as these, these group of national advisors was gonna, is gonna um, benefit, okay? All right, next up. Um, at the end of about a four month period, so sometime in late February, maybe three month period, sometime in late, late February, we're going to, all the winners are going to ask to participate in an optional workshop day or days really, um, where they're going to be able to share the progress 
on their uh, progress in their project um, with the group as an opportunity as an opportunity to get some some feedback and to and to and to and to um, proudly display um, all the work um, all the work that the particular winner was able to do over the the previous three months or so that ties directly into the second phase of this project which is pro which is that projects will be considered for a second round of funding from night to support their full production and premiere by the end of 2021. So again, in this first part of night new work 2020, people are applying for a $10,000 prize to be to to flat to fully develop or to develop this concept for a new work of the performing arts. That work, the depending on uh, that work is going to be presented to the group. It's going to be developed. People are going to work on it, et cetera, et cetera. From those projects, Knight will select some to be fully funded, so that they can be premiered by the end of 2021. And all total, all told, Knight has five hundred thousand dollars to award. Uh, for night new work. So that's $500,000 that's going to be all in inclusive inclusive of the $10,000 um, first phase one prizes and the subsequent follow up follow ups. Okay. So if you need more information about this, all this is in writing, we also have a pretty extensive frequently asked question available. And the link to the application is all at, online at this website, which is kf.org slash new work 2020. Or you can just go, you go to kf.org and you can navigate in there and, you, and you'll find it. Just again, we're accepting applications now through September 7th. No late applications are accepted. There's like no exceptions to that rule. So please submit, submit your application. And when you do so, try and do it uh, try to do it a day or two early because you never know with this, with these, uh, this stuff, it, always something always comes up. <laughs> so it's better to leave more time available than to wait until, you know, 11.58 PM on, on September 7th. Okay. So with that in mind, I'm going to leave this slide open. I'm going to ask to see if, um, if Priya has anything else that she would like to share before we jump into the question and answers. If not, we'll just get right into it. Thanks, Adam. That was that was great. Um, I would just add a couple of things. Um, so one is um, very important, which is that we are doing. You know, we usually we usually do these in person, but of course, with the um, pandemic um, protocols uh, for public health safety. We're doing virtual uh, sort of office hours, so to speak. And so um, we encourage you if you're interested in um, just chatting with us one-on-one, -on -one, um, please do sign up for those. And I wonder if we could ask our colleague Raul um, to please um, drop a link into the chat function um, where you can see where to sign up for those. It's just a Calendly link and those are, um, you know, just kind of short um, phone calls where we would love to hear about your idea and just kind of talk it through with you and, and help you figure out if it would be a good fit for this um, or if you have specific questions about the application. So um, I think that that's a great resource um we, yeah. we hope to be helpful with that so just wanted to mention that thank you for um, bringing it up i'm like <laughs> sure this is on my this is, this is every afternoon of mine for the <laughs> next two weeks i can't believe i forgot it the link to be the, the 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 link to be able to sign up for for a time slot is available on that same uh same page of uh, kf.org slash new work 2020 you're going to find everything there application faq press release uh, as well as the link to sign up for those um, those virtual um, coffee hours, which are like Thank fifteen you. minute, twenty minute time conversations that they happen. Um, over Zoom. Over the, yeah, over the next couple of weeks. So yeah. thank you. Thank you, Adam, for mentioning it's, it is on the website. Um, and the other couple of things is just to um, 
uh, um, kind of clarify a couple of you know two two ideas. So one is that when we talk about how this would be feasible, you know, to happen in a uh, sort of during or post COVID sort of world, um, that's that we mean a, a, that you know it looks like COVID. Uh, 19 is going to be around for a bit, you know, um, there, there will likely be waves of opening up, maybe shutting down, opening up, shutting down. It's so, it's so hard to know. Um, and so given that, um, it, we're really interested in seeing what you all have in mind. So that could be physically distanced in person, you know, uh, experiences that arts that shared is shared in that way. Um, or it could be completely online, you know, it could be a completely digital sort of uh, um, performing arts work and experience for the for audience members, or it could be some kind of hybrid. Um, and we know that we've been seeing some really interesting things happening on all of those fronts. And so it's really more about what you envision for the piece that you are working on or that you're interested in creating. And, um, and you can, you, you know, we look forward to reading an application, how you envision that working. Um, so that's what we mean by just some, something that can actually be created and shared and experienced by audiences eventually, you know, um, given the restrictions that are probably going to be in place in some form or fashion for the next maybe year or more. Um, and then the last thing I just would, uh, and I, I think some of these I'm touching on a few of the questions that have come in, but the last thing I would also just do is, is to echo Adam in kind of um, underscoring the difference between phase one and phase two. And I think this is something that for those of you who might have been familiar with the process back in 2018, um, it's a bit different than that. Um, so this, in this um, iteration of my new work, the first phase, you don't have to um, present the work and premiere it. Um, really, it's about giving you all as the artists the, you know, $10,000 toward your time, your expertise, if you need to rent space to say choreograph or something like that, you know, it, it's giving you um, funds toward all of that unrestricted um, so that you can have the time and space to, um, it could be develop a new uh, work of dance, you know, it could be choreographing, it could be, and maybe you are rehearsing with someone in some way. Um, it could be composing a new music work. Um, it could be writing a play, writing and developing a play. Um, so it could be, or, or some hybrid of those, as Adam said earlier. Um, so it's really that that is this first phase of work that we're accepting you know, applications for right now. Um, in phase two, that's where with, um, from the works that result, you know, and those could be, you know, your draft of a play, or it could be a complete, you know, could be a very far along work in progress, um, uh, you know, say about three to four months after the decisions are announced in December of this year. Um, in spring of next year, from those, um, Knight would um, select a subset of those, a, a handful um, for follow on funding that goes toward the presentation. And it's at that point that those um, phase two works um, would be, you know, we would, we would ask for a budget for how, you know, what would it cost to present that? And, um, and then those funds or those works would be expected to, you know, premiere in some way, again, the way that you've um, envisioned um, by the end of 2021. So just wanna really clarify the difference between phase one and phase two. Um, so let's see, and I think we've got some questions in the Q&A and some questions in the chat as well. Um, so one of the questions is um, for music entries, how much work is expected to be included in this grant? An entire concert worth or a single piece as part of a larger program? That is a great question. Uh, I would say we leave it up to you. Um, you know, it, the duration of any, any work, um, it, it so varies, you know, so I think it probably more depends on, um, you know, what, 
what you're envisioning, maybe sort of where you are in the process and what you think you might be able to develop over the course of a few months with the support of $10,000. Um, I think that's, we kind of, we try to leave that open and keep, and ourselves keep an open mind as to what, um, what you, um, you might be wanting to work on and what you might submit. And, and also I like to add to, this is not exactly what you're asked, what the person is question, asking, but it's good to bring up anyway, that there are the, we ask, there are time limits with respects to what you submit as a work sample in the, in the application. So we ask that you keep, songs audio files and video files anywhere between like two and five minutes and then just kind of leave, leave it at, uh, about that much or else it becomes very difficult to be able to get through um everything that's a that's a great point adam and i think um i, I might actually just jump to a question that was just submitted that is on that topic since you mentioned work samples um adam um, there's a question, is the work sample section intended to share previous work or should the space also be used to share additional media to support the proposed concept? Um, I think it could be either, you know, really the work samples, uh, we are interested in previous work, um, but if you have something that it's part, you know, what you're applying for is something that's you're already working on and you have something that you can share that helps illustrate what your concept is, um, that would be very helpful. So really this is intended to be, these are intended to be things that help us and the advisory panel of practitioners to get as strong a sense as possible of what your concept is and maybe what you've done in the past that, um, that leads into this work that you're, that you're working on now. It's the, the, I would like to think of the you know what we're trying the point you're trying to get across in the in the application with the written narratives as well as the work samples is to give somebody who has no who has zero background information on you as good as a look and feel and taste to what a final product they can expect that's that's the picture that 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 you're trying to paint with the with everything that goes into this application Yes, that's great. That's helpful. Thanks, Adam. Um, okay, let's, let's see. Keep on. I go we'll just... with. Go for it. We've got two streams yeah, just... of questions here. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, I'll try this one, which is since we're talking about the application, um, it says, you know, with the feasibility statement, what are examples of partners to include? That again depends on the concept that you're, that you're presenting. If, for instance, your idea is, oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to present this work in a theater, but the theater is going to be, um, you know, not only is like the, how, how is the crew's going to work, but how the audience is going to sit is going to be a very specific setup so that everybody is, you know, physically distanced, blah, 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 blah. In that instance, it would be it would be worth noting that you're working with some with a theater, a place that has the capacity to be able to be um, flexible, to be able to be arranged in that direction, and that you know, uh, or, or, and if you are working with someone specific who is going to help advise on to what those health health and safety kind of measurements or protocols would be, that would be a good person to include or. For instance, if your project has a strong tech component to it and you yourself may not be a real a technic, super technical person in that respect, then it will be worth noting, oh, I'm, let's say I'll be doing the, the dance choreography, but all the other tech stuff that's happening, you know, we're working with XYZ who, you know, has that sort of, that sort of background. Um, Again, what in that particular part of the feasibility statement, the point that you're trying to, to illustrate, what you're saying is, which you can read the application like this, like everything else is like, look at this fabulous idea that we have about this incredible groundbreaking piece concept for a new uh, piece of performing art, this new work. Uh, and, and here is the feasibility statement shows, illustrates that you've thought through the actual like practical logistics of making something like that happen. So I'm going to dismiss that. Okay, go ahead. You can pick 
the next one. I'll take the next one. Thanks. Uh, okay, so um, one of the questions is, are 2018 Night New Works winners eligible to apply again now in 2020? I'm going to give a broad, uh, I'm going to give a two-part answer. So one is that um, I think if, if your project is complete, then I think it could work for, for you to apply again. Um, but I would encourage you to reach out to Adam as the relationship manager on your Night New Work grant from 2018 to discuss the particulars. Because I know that um, so many of those works um, were slated to premiere this year and 2020 has been thrown for a loop. So, so um, in that sense, I would really encourage you to just kind of email Adam and, and you know, we can, we can kind of take it from there. Does that sound good to you, Adam? You can give me a thumbs up or. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's thumbs not up. that, there's yeah. not that many people on that list. So it's really exactly. <laughs> I'm, happy, I'm happy to do it. Cool. Great. You want to, you want to choose the next question? Adam? Sure. Okay. So here's a question that says, you know, can, can you submit an idea of what was considered a prelude of already premiered work or an extension like a part two or a sequel? I would say if that sequel hasn't premiered, then it would count as a, it would count as a new work. So sure. That was an easy one. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Maybe I'll choose one, Adam, that I think several people have asked. So um, could you have a team made up of Miami-Dade Miami -Dade artists or artists collaborating with art and artists or artists from elsewhere? Yes, that, that is fine with us. I think the lead applicant or group uh, needs to be Miami-Dade based. And by lead applicant, that person should have a, that person be you, um, should have a um, really significant you know, lead role. In, in the development of the work, but it's okay if you're collaborating with folks elsewhere. You, we would just like to know who those folks are, or if it's a group from elsewhere, let us know who they are and you know what what role each collaborator is doing. And you'll see that if you're applying as an artist collective, you will be asked to list the names of the people that you consider part of the collective and kind of like what their specialty is or what their what their particular role in the in the in the project is. Sounds good. Adam, do you want to choose the next sentence? Or I mean a next question on the list? Sure. And I'm I'm gonna be muting myself on and on because I have an unruly toddler in the room next door. <laughs> and so, you know, trying to keep the keep things professional. Um, okay, so here's one. It says, can the new work be a continuation of a series, e.g. a music festival or masterclass series that has taken place in the past but is now being reimagined for the COVID world? I think, sure, I, I, we're okay with that. I mean, one of the and here's the, here's the reason why I say sure. One of the things that we're looking that we're that we're hoping that will come out of this experiment or these experiments that we're going to be funding is models that models for the performing arts that could inform other people's work, right? So, like, in other words, uh, every every performing art presenter, performing artist in the world right just about in the world right now I was trying to figure figure this out if some of the experiments that we've funded that night has funded here in miami um can serve as models for the rest of the world that would be a massive that would be a massive uh, success on 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 our part so i'm, I'm gonna say i'm gonna say yes Adam, can I just add one thing to that? Sure. I agree. Um, I think as long as the the focus of the application, the concept that's being developed, the application is the work itself. So it's the it's it's the content, and not necessarily like the structure or event. So what we're interested in through Night New Work, as opposed to perhaps Night Arts Challenge projects that you you might um, um, also be familiar with, is not necessarily um, 
the just like the events of how how they're presented and experienced like we're interested in how eventually the work will be experienced and how that would be presented but um, what these ten thousand dollar prizes are meant to do is support the development of the content um, and so I I would that's the that's the sort of one piece I would add to to what Adam said. Great thank you and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a next one because I got it right here in front of me which is how many applications can we submit? Some you know, we got a couple of different versions of that question. Uh, it's one application per person. More specifically, it's one and it's one application per email. So, um, um, so please make it count. Uh, go ahead, Priya. You, your choice. Sure, sure. Um, let's see. Um, if we have a virtual gallery with a live performance space, would the premiere of a commissioned work as a com component of the VR gallery be acceptable? I think it would. It, the commissioned work is the part that would be a fit for this, um, for this uh, open call. I would say this is one where um, it might be helpful if you were to schedule one of, you know, one of these one-on-one -on -one chats that we have available um, just to get into the nitty gritty, but based on the description here, um, I think that that sounds like it would be would be eligible. Okay. Now um, we have a couple of really great questions here. Here's the next another one that says it says um, you know for the actual premiere, um, are you offering any additional funding support to a presenter? So if the concept that's developed in phase one gets selected for for full funding follow-on funding in phase two there is going to be there'll be uh, a budget involved it will be much more along the lines of what of the conventional kind of grant proceedings and so as part of that budget there's going to be money to cover all the associated that would cover the associated associated expenses with the premier. Um, and that part of that would be towards support for, for the presenter, you know, for everybody else that's involved in the marketing and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Can, can I add something to that? Um, sure, Adam? Of course. Um, the, so, um, this kind of relates to a, there's a, another question that was asked about how many um, projects would be selected in phase one. And right. so um, in phase one, we anticipate that likely 15 to 20 projects would be selected. It really depends on what comes through and kind of, you know, just how, how, how everything shakes out. But our, our guess right now is that about 15 to 20 um, projects would receive um, ten thousand dollars each in that of those initial unrestricted funds. So then the remainder out of the five hundred thousand, you know, potential um, dollars that we have to award through this open call, the remainder is what would be available to go toward the follow-on funding to the um, projects that are selected in phase two um, for presentation funds for production funds. Um, and then we have a couple, we had, we had a couple questions about the sort of uh, evaluation process. Um, so I can get into, I'll get into that uh, um, really, really quickly. And so, so we have each application is going to be read by, I don't know what the number is, but it's going to be probably at least six people are going to read each application. Um, maybe even, maybe even more. And those applications get scored, evaluated along four dimensions, right? And so first dimension is kind of around artistic, artistic rigor, right? Like how, is there a real rigor to the work? Is there a sort of thoughtfulness to the practice? Is it connected to, is it connected to a lineage of, of artistic, of artistic thought and work? Um, uh, does it display high levels of craftsmanship, that kind of thing. Then the second dimension is around um, artist's voice and vision. 
So does this person have a very clear voice? Do they have a unique perspective? Are these, are these uh, stories, are these types of stories very, very important for one to understand that they really want to understand what, understand Miami and its people, its culture, et cetera? The third dimension is around, you know, is this thing feasible? Like, does it, does it, does the application demonstrate that the applicant um, has thought through the practical logistical uh, considerations to make what they are proposing happen actually happen? And then the fourth dimension is, would this have, would this work shape the performing arts industry? Like, is this going to make people think differently about how it is that they, that they can present work or how it is that they present dance, for instance? Um, like, does this have, does this particular project have the potential to have a transformative impact to the field? As a whole, um, and that's the that's the four basic four basic areas there. I hope that answers um, people's questions. Okay, we got about ten minutes left, and we got a whole bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll just kind of like uh, kind of rapid, rapid fire. fire sure. rapid fire and I think them. I think some of them we've already talked, we've already actually answered. Yeah. So we have some repeated questions. So. Um, so along the same lines, um, another question about the process is um, is about um, just talking about the judging process. Um, so uh, Adam, do you want, I don't know if you want to kind of walk through a little bit how how that works. The judging, the judging process. Mm -hmm. Also, we have the four, you know, you have those four kind of axes and and the evaluators, it, they're framed as a question where it's like, does this project, you know, I can't remember the exact phrasing, but something to the effect of, does this project demonstrate artistic rigor? Okay. And then the end, and then, and then the evaluator responds as like, definitely yes, as like a maybe leaning towards yes, maybe leaning towards no or definitely no. And then each one of those answers has a different numerical value associated with it. And then at the end, we tally, we tally, the, tally the scores. And from there, there'll be some kind of natural breaking point. Um, we'll take, we'll probably take, you know, the top 40, 50, something like that. Uh, and then we're going to do interviews. We're going to do interviews with folks, just a quick conversation, just to Kind of get a sense of the of the of the people um, that we're that we're that we're uh, talking to. You know what I mean? Uh, at the end, what we're trying to do is we're we're really like recruiting for like a, a, for a whole cohort of people, not just not just uh, not a co it's not a collection of individuals as much as it is as a co cohort of, of people. And um, and then from those uh, those interviews, we'll make a final night staff will make a final decision on who those first round people are and then there'll be a sort of similar process around the second second round that is a lot of a lot of uh, evaluation and discussions and um, that sort of thing thanks Adam and one thing I'd add is that the the panel the advisory panel of practitioners um, in in the various disciplines um, they'll they also participate in the evaluation of the applications and discussion um, of those as well. Um, and then the ultimate ultimate funding decisions are made by night staff. Or mm -hmm. I should say ultimate funding recommendations are made by night staff and ultimately approved, um, the ultimate approval comes from the board. Um, so that's another, another question. Um, there's some questions about what what types of things um, could be supported by the ten thousand um, dollars. 
Um, so this is meant to be unrestricted in support of you as you, uh, your, you develop this work. So you can pay yourself and the artists who are involved in the development of this work. Um, you could pay for space. Um, you could, um, you could pay for um, expenses that are incurred, you know, um, in the development of it, you know, outside of even space. So, um, I mean, let's just say there's some sort of technological, you know, um, platform or um, something that you're um, using in the development of your work that's a new expense for you, or it, it's, it's um, critical to what you're doing. Um, that qualifies as well. Um, so it's really meant to be a flexible $10,000 that, that you can allocate as you need to, 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 um, to work on this piece. Right. There is, a, there is the, the 10,000, the $10,000 can be, there's only really two, two restrictions on what the money could be used for. And that's from the IRS. The first one is you can't re-grant them. You can't re-grant the dollars to another. So you can't you can't try and act as a as a kind of a pass through to re-grant the re-grant the dollars. And the second one is around travel. I think travel is a sp is it gets a little bit a little bit dicey. But everything else that is involved with the practice of with the practice of art making or the pursuit of art making is a charitable activity in the eyes of the IRS. So like Priya mentioned, that means you can take the $10,000, you can just take it as income and then use that money, buy groceries, pay rent, blah, 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 whatever. The money, the money can be split between you and people that you're collaborating with. That's fine too. You can have the money go pay directly into a uh, space rental or to supplies. Anything that is anything that is linked to your to your practice as an artist uh, is a okay. Cool. So I'm just looking at the last few questions we have. Um, so another question is, um, let's see. If we're able to have two presenters willing to premiere the work, are you okay with that? Uh, I think we're fine with that. I don't, I don't, I wonder would both of them consider the, it a premiere <laughs> if they're two different organizations? That would be a logistical question, I would wonder. But we, if you have multiple um, presenters who want to show the work, more power to you. That's great. You know, we, 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 mm -hmm. we are interested in how you are going to get the work out into the world and how people will experience it. Um, let's see. What if a dance is based on the tenets of a literary work? Should the work be abstract? Uh, I think it's fine for a dance to be based on the tenets of a literary work and should it be abstract? I don't think it has to be abstract. It, it may, this one, this is where it might be helpful um, to kind of understand the concept better in one of the one-on-one -on -one conversations. But just based on those couple of questions, you know, we're, we're open to many, many uh, different types of, of works. So um, I think we don't, we don't really have parameters on, on those aspects. Yeah, there was a, there was a question that we got in the, in our last information session with respect to like our, sensibility on specific topics or if they could be risque in their in the the concept for the new work let me tell you you're not gonna offend anybody <laughs> over here with um with the particular subject matter that is gonna be that that you'll be talking about i mean night is not in the business of telling of telling artists what to make and what to say you know the first uh, uh, belief in the First Amendment is is a core. It's core to tonight's mission and one of the main and one of the big reasons behind our funding of the arts. So you can say you can flex your right as Americans to say whatever you want. <laughs> um, 
So another question is, would a project that seems like an arts education program online that combines as benefits artists in all the areas of performance covered by the application, music, dance, theater, and other art forms fit in this application? So the combination of the different art forms would, would totally be fine with this application. Um, the key is that the, that Night New Work is um, supporting um, creation of new artworks by artists. So that's, that's the focus of this. So if it's an arts education sort of um, curriculum or, or a project that's more about arts education, um, then it probably isn't a fit for this. Um, it's really more about um, you know, artists who are artists or organization that's creating um, a new piece of some kind um, or collection of pieces. Um, if you if you still have questions where it feels like you know maybe maybe it still could be a fit again I think um, we encourage you to to um, do one of those um, conversations with us where we can really understand the details of of what you have in mind. Mm -hmm. And there's still many there's still many slots available, so um, don't be shy. I'm just doing a quick browse, Adam, but I think we may have actually um answered all the questions um all uh, all the questions or categories of questions i think we've yeah i think there's one one last one that i'm seeing mm -hmm. here that's new and then and then we can sign off because we're getting pretty close to three o'clock mm -hmm. which it says it says you mentioned miami and covid should the work be based on something about miami and what is happening well i think that goes back uh, ties in very nicely with my the comments I just made with respect to the First Amendment. Um, we don't tell people um, what their work should be about. Granted, um, uh, it does so it doesn't have to specifically be about Miami, and it doesn't specifically have to be about what is happening. In as in as much that the the, the themes or the topics covered in the piece don't have to be about coronavirus. That being said, um, the piece has to work in the context of the pandemic and the restrictions that that's put on the way that we can experience the performing arts or how we can create the performing arts. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, well said. Um, I'm just and seeing I, so, one more. Oh, sorry, one more. <laughs> it which keeps is, sneaking in. I know, which is uh, probably a good good one to close on. Which is, will this info, will the info session recordings be posted publicly? Yes. In fact, our previous one is already posted on the website, and this one, I think, I'm, I believe, will also be posted. Um, we cover pretty much the same the same uh, information. Uh, so yes, you would be able to access this, reference this. Um, uh, in future, if you want to take a look back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Great. And so, and so with that, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to, uh, to uh, be with us here this afternoon. I know if you got kids right now, it's crazy for you. I understand. <laughs> um, so we appreciate it. Thank you, Priya, for, for, for joining me. No, thank you. Thank you all. I just want to echo Adam's gratitude for for you all for what you're doing out there still making art. Um, we really appreciate you and appreciate that you took the time to learn more about this opportunity. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Raul, our colleague who's behind the scenes. And, uh, and we look forward to uh, to staying in touch and learning more about what you're working on. <laughs>